Hello and welcome to this video on the Nikon Z6 here on Lights and Buttons. We have the Nikon Z6 here on my left, your right, paired up with the Nikkor 70 to 200 f2.8 lens. On my right, your left, we have the Nikon D7100, which is not the newest camera, but it's the current camera that I own. There's a lot of differences between these cameras. This is a mirrorless, this is your traditional DSLR, and I'm going to do some comparisons as well as covering uh, three major points. I took some notes. Um, I only rented this camera for three days. So here's my initial impressions. Today I wanted to cover three different things as I said. First one would be, is it a good vacation full frame camera? And I'm going to concentrate more on the uh, video aspect of this camera. Now I'll tell you a little bit more later. Um, also, how's the video autofocus? As well as some of the different quirks I found with the camera. So with the Z6, let's start with the different pros. There's a lot of pros with this camera. I think overall it's a great camera. Um, is it a perfect camera? No, I think there's some improvements that can be made, but depending on what you use the camera for, you may or may not see these as valid arguments because for me, my use might be different than yours, but I'm here just to purely give you my perspective on the Nikon Z6. So a little bit background, I'm coming from a DX DSLR, meaning that it's the uh, APS-C crop frame or a crop sensor on this Nikon D7100. So a lot of my lenses actually are DX lenses. So it won't, it, it will technically fit the the uh, FX format or the, or the full frame format for the Nikon Z6, but it won't really take advantage of 100% of the sensors. This will automatically detect uh, DX lenses, but it will operate in a crop format. Um, so you lose some of the edges of the sensor, but it is still a full frame sensor and it does very well in low light. In terms of the pros and cons, I will be listing the top five for each. Starting with the pros, the first one is that the ISO button is on the right side. I think a lot of the Canon cameras have that feature and it's nice to see that Nikon is starting to put ISO, which is, at least for me, a heavily used button on the right side so you're not depending on two hands to change that function. Another pro is the touchscreen. Now, some of the newer Nikon cameras will have the touchscreen capability, so it's not, again, it's not unique to this camera, but I like the tap to focus feature when using it in video. And now we have the Nikon Z6, and I have the same lens on as the one on the D7100, which is the Nikkor 18 to 200 VR lens. It's pretty stable in terms of autofocus when I aim it at the table, just like before. And then now if I change the camera around to uh, putting at my face, let's see how the autofocus performs. Again, the camera does not have the flip out screen, so I can't see what's going on now. I'll have to see it uh, during post-production. All right, so we're here in the studio with the D7100. Um, I'm just aiming the camera at the table and not really moving, yet the uh, camera struggles to focus and attempts to correct what was already in focus by hunting around. Um, now the face detection is on, so I will go ahead and turn the camera around. Hopefully I'm in focus. I don't know because the screen doesn't flip out. But as I'm walking around, even the uh, distance between myself and the camera is the same. If I have the full-time AFF autofocus during the video, it struggles to focus. Also, the top LCD screen is nice. I was looking at the Sony a7 III and that one does not have a top LCD screen. And in my opinion, it's useful because if your camera is hanging from your neck and you're not looking at the rear LCD screen, it's a useful kind of quick dashboard view of what's going on in your camera. You get a quick view of your shutter speed, aperture, you get your ISO, um, quick high level information that you can see right away even before you take your eye to the viewfinder or look on the rear LCD screen. Another pro of the Nikon Z6 is that it has IBIS or the in-body image stabilization. Now the in-body image stabilization, 
you get to have a sensor that shifts around and will correct for any camera movements that are unwanted. That's traditionally handled by the VR or the vibration reduction feature of lenses such as in this uh, Nikon 70 to 200. But now you have that capability in the body. So if your lens doesn't support it, like a lot of Nikon's uh, prime lenses, you get that additional feature. And last but not least, this camera also has focus peaking for manually adjusting focus. So if you're not familiar with that, um, it's a feature where it will highlight the edges of items in the screen that are in focus. So things that are the sharpest, it'll start highlighting so you exactly know what's on focus. Sometimes it's a little bit hard if you're using manual focus to kind of tell what's in focus when looking at the screen, um, but that tool helps a lot. Now on to my top five cons. The first one is that the Nikon Z6 only has one memory card. Yes, I know this horse has been beaten to death, but I honestly think that they should have put in a second memory card. And even though the body may not be tall enough, I think they should have made it a little bit taller. And in doing so, it will make gripping the uh, camera a little bit easier so that your pinky, for people who have larger hands, won't kind of slip through if you don't have a battery grip. And speaking of battery grips, I think Nikon should have a uh, battery grip that's ready to go when they were releasing the camera. Um, I've heard different rumors about the new battery grip, at least at the time of this recording. They don't have an official battery grip on sale, but I've heard the battery grip won't have any buttons on it. It'll just be purely a grip, possibly with the battery, but no vertical shutter release, which I think is a little bit silly because with the Nikon D7100 and other cameras that are some years old, that feature was existing, so why stop that on the Nikon Z6? Also, in the uh, back of the camera, we have the nice LCD screen. It tilts up, it tilts down, but it does not swivel around, so I think that's a feature that's lacking, especially since Nikon took out the buttons on the left, so if you compare it to the uh, Nikon D7100, they have buttons over here, which I can see that gets in the way of a hinge, but with this new design, I honestly think that they should have added a hinge so that kind of like the uh, the Canon mirrorless cameras and some of the um, other cameras, I mean Nikon's 5000 series cameras have the flip out screen. Now another con, this is a little bit of a weird one on the Z6 is that if I'm in video mode, I can't see the total amount of video I can record in terms of time. Um, so basically I want to see what's the storage space left. There's no... Um, display that shows that you have 50% of storage left or X amount of minutes left. Um, what I see is of the 30 minute limit for the video, how much I have left. I'm not sure if I'm maybe missing something or if I didn't enable something in the uh, display. Now, if you switch to the um, still photo mode, you can see the number of pictures that you have left, but not for video. Video, um, again, it's a little bit different. Not sure why. With the Z6's histogram, there's a little bit of a quirkiness to it. When you enable this display mode, a lot of the other information disappears from the screen. This gives it a little bit more of a clean look, but I think the camera operator should at least have the option of displaying all the data at once, including the histogram. This last one probably confused me the most. The 120 frames per second recording mode only works with FX lenses, in other words, full frame lenses. It might not apply to a whole lot of people because they might already have the full frame lenses when purchasing this full frame camera. But for me, coming from a DX system, I was looking forward to at least using some of my other lenses, the majority being DX lenses with the Z6. For example, I was shooting a video for Lux Event Entertainment during a wedding recently, and in these clips, I got out my Nikkor 50mm full frame 1.8D lens, and I got some pretty neat slow mo footage. But no matter what I tried, I couldn't get a DX lens to work in this mode. So in other words, if you had a lens like the Nikon 18 to 200 uh, DX lens, you can attach it to the FTZ adapter. You can record video at 30 frames a second, but you cannot bump it to 120 frames a second, which I kind of get confused on because frame rate doesn't really have anything to do with the type of lens that you add on. And another kind of a double whammy is that if you do try to select the 120 frames a second and Nikon calls it 30p times four, since you can play it back at 30p, but it'll be four times slower, it'll allow you to choose the option in the menu, but it will return to 30 frames a second without actually telling you. So I select it and, it, and I think that it actually goes through no error messages come up and then before I knew it I was recording in a standard 30 frames a second video without doing slow motion so that was a little bit odd. 
So that is the top five pros and cons that I've picked out personally for the Nikon Z6. There are some other things I want to go over before revisiting the three questions I had in the beginning of this video. First off, I want to say this camera is very easy to use compared to switching to a new system if you're coming in from the Nikon system. It feels a lot like a digital SLR other than it doesn't have a mirror. So obviously you're pretty much in live view all the time. I want to mention the IBIS, even though it's built into the camera and you have that nice five axis image stabilization as advertised. If you do attach a lens through the FTZ adapter, I've heard you only get a three axis image stabilization instead of having the full five axis. So that's just something to note. Another thing is that when you use the tap to focus, sometimes it loses track of the subject, even though it's always in the screen. I guess it depends on how fast the camera moves as well as the lighting conditions. Another thing is that if I'm using the touch screen and my hand comes too close to the viewfinder while interacting with the touch screen, for example, with the touch to focus or selecting a menu item, then the camera thinks that my eye is up to the viewfinder and turns off the rear screen. I'd imagine this is not unique to this camera and might apply to a whole bunch of other mirrorless cameras, but it's something to note if you're coming from a DSLR. Also, focus peaking is only available in manual focus mode. Again, with the tap to focus, just to make sure that it's pinpointing the focus, it'll be nice to have that feature with autofocus. The back buttons also do not light up, so at night you'll have to bring them closer to a light source or simply know where the buttons are by feel. If you're planning to add an external microphone, such as a shotgun microphone, do note that the microphone jack is below the headphone jack. Normally, at least my preference, is that the microphone jack would be closest to the hot shoe where the microphone is mounted. Just like the D850 I ran it a while ago, the third party batteries do not work with the Z6. I personally have a Watson battery and once I plug it in, I get an error on the screen right away. The mode dial, in my opinion, doesn't have to lock. I've never encountered a situation where I accidentally bumped the mode dial, so I think this doesn't have to be locked down. This camera also uses an XQD card, so not necessarily a con, it's actually a higher performing card. But if you're going to spend $2,000 on camera, I don't think spending $100 on a memory card would be that big of a deal compared to someone that's buying, let's say, a $600 camera. So what's the overall verdict? Going back to our three questions. Number one, is this a good quote-unquote vacation camera? In other words, if you're a one-person show, is this a good camera to use? I'd say yes. Assuming that you're not vlogging and pointing the camera to yourself since the screen doesn't swivel out, this is a pretty good camera. As I said, it's pretty easy to use. I think overall, the controls are pretty well laid out and very similar to a Nikon DSLR if you're already familiar with that system. Number two, how does the full-time autofocus work? Well, AFF is pretty good, but I'd say not excellent. I think there's room to improve, but certainly Nikon is working at that. Uh, for example, something that I didn't mention is eye autofocus. IAF is currently available with the Sony cameras like the A7R3 and A7 III, but Nikon is planning to push out a firmware update that will allow the Z6 to have a similar feature. So more improvements are coming down the line for this camera. In general, I think Sony does have the upper hand with video autofocusing. With photos, for me, I don't really have a problem with focusing in general, even with the DSLRs. And finally, number three for the Z6 and its quirks, I guess every camera has its own different quirks and I don't see anything majorly wrong with this camera. Again, unless you need that flip out screen or a second memory card, I don't really see any showstoppers here. But in my use case, I find that the uh, lower battery life for the mirrorless cameras in general is a big issue. I think it's silly that Nikon left out the option for a battery grip in this case, while my old D7100 has that option. To wrap this up, if you're shopping for a $2,000 camera, you're looking for a performance camera. And in my opinion, it doesn't really matter in terms of size. It seems like a lot of people associate mirrorless cameras with compactness, but that's not always the case. Plus with an interchangeable lens camera, you'll be most likely using different lenses and possibly some other accessories. So you'll end up using a camera bag anyway. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. I know in this video, I compared apples to oranges because comparing a DSLR with a mirrorless cameras and kind of two different price ranges isn't exactly equal, but hopefully some of you that are in the same boat as I am might find this video helpful. 
Did I address all the points that you were looking for? Perhaps some. Do you have a different perspective on some of the points I've made? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. I'll see you in the next video.